up guys? What's up cycling fanatics? In this video, I'm comparing a budget time trial bike versus a high-end road bike. Which is gonna be faster and is it worth to spend your money on an extra bike if you're only racing a few time trials every year? So last weekend, I was supposed to race the National Club Championship for Team Time Trials. I'm not a time trialist. I don't have a time trial bike, but I could borrow a time trial bike from a teammate. Obviously, a new high-end time trial bike will be way faster than a normal road bike. The aerodynamic position is very different than, than, than on a usual road bike. But let's say you don't have between five or 10,000 euros to spend because that's really how expensive a new time trial bike is and you're on a budget. Let's say 500 to 1,000 euros. Is it smart to buy a, a second-hand old-school time trial bike? The budget time trial bike I'm using for this test is the Planet X Stealth Pro Carbon. The bike is a 2010 model that was bought for around 600 euros, including the closed carbon wheel. It has mechanical shifting, no internal cable routing, and it's 10 speed. The front wheel is a carbon wheel I put in myself to have a fair comparison. I'm putting it to the test against my own Canyon Arrowed. I have an extensive review of this bike if you want to check that out. The only thing I changed for this time trial test was the saddle position. I added the TT bars and I put in the fastest wheels I have. The bike as you see it now will be around 6,000 euros. I put both bikes on the stationary trainer to adjust the fit and to get an idea of the difference in position between these bikes. I did not have a lot of time to prepare. I, I was working in the days before the race, so I could only do one ride on this time trial bike. And then I did another ride on my Aeroad with TT bars. And I, I wasn't sure, I, I had the idea that maybe the Aeroad is faster. So I'm gonna put it to the test today. Side by side, I will have three setups. The first setup is the time trial bike with a cheap rear wheel, no disc. Second setup is the time trial bike with a disc wheel. So we're gonna see what the difference is with a closed back wheel. Then I'm gonna do this exact same run on my road bike with a TT bar, and we're gonna see which is faster. Right here, I'm at a, a nice long stretch of road. I'm gonna do about six kilometers, which should take me about 10 minutes and we'll have either a pretty straight headwind or a sp pretty straight tailwind. So this makes uh, a faster and a slower segment. The biggest benefit of a time trail bike will be at high speed. So anything from 40 kilometers an hour and more. So we'll need to go really fast to show the difference between the bikes, if there is any difference. So to make this sort of scientific, I want to go exactly the same amount of power. I'll use the same power meter on both bikes and I'll ride into the wind for those six and a half kilometers, turn around and do the same exact same stretch in two different intervals. And I'll do that on, on all three bike setups. And then we're going to compare the three and uh, see what the difference is. Uh, so you might be wondering why I have a bike on the roof when I have a station wagon. Let me, let me show you. This is actually a really cool roof rack. This goes on the roof with suction knobs and dude, this is super, super strong. I can still fit one bike in the trunk, but I can't fit both of them. And mounting this roof rack is way easier than taking two semi-permanent car seats out of the car. It takes about two minutes to install. So yeah, great stuff. This is not a sponsored video or anything. Nobody's paying me to do this, but uh, I do want to say Free Frog sent me this rack a couple months ago. Just I just wanted to show you guys because I used it once before for the gravel bike and uh, it is really, really nice. I'm gonna get ready for the first run. Uh, I don't have any time trial equipment. I have a helmet, but I don't have a speed suit. Uh, so I have found my old uh, SDBC kit, which resembles a speed suit 
sort of uh, the most out of anything I have. So I'm wearing this to uh, go as fast as possible because that's when a time trial bike is actually only making a big difference. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to do this any form of scientific. Looks absolutely ridiculous, but anything for the video. And the weather is getting better. Dude, I've been waiting to shoot this video for like four days. It was raining every day. It's finally happening. Before we really go into this test, let's first look at my position on the bikes and compare the two. I'm testing this 10 year old TT bike, which is made for an aerodynamic position and pure straight line speed against my road bike. Also an aero bike, but with concessions for handling and comfort. So this is the Planet X, Planet X Stealth Carbon Pro time trial bike. To be honest, I know nothing about this bike. Uh, I think it's a 2010-ish model, so we're going 10 years back uh, in time uh, when this bike was released and when the technology of this bike was, was current. Uh, but it is a time trial bike, so the, the seat angle is probably steeper, it should be lower in the front, you know, the whole angle should be uh, built so your position on the bike is better for aerodynamics. So to have a fair comparison against a time trial bike, I set up my road bike as if I was racing a time trial. So I added a time trial bar on top of the normal handlebars and I put the seat all the way forward. And this required me to raise the seat by over a centimeter to still have a proper position. These adjustments help to increase my hip angle while pedaling and that will be beneficial for power transfer. And it actually got me really close to the position on the Planet X time trial bike really close. I can hardly spot the difference uh, with them side by side. Maybe you can pause or rewind the video a few times if you want to check it out yourself. Of course both positions can be optimized but this was about the best I could get it with the resources I had and I spent about the same amount of time on both bikes. Uh, so the only really uncomfortable thing is to sit on this saddle all the way forward because you're really you're pretty much sitting on only this much of the seat. I try to, to mimic this, the same positions on this bike. So straight up with hands on the bars, in the TT bars and then all the way forward. So uh, I'm now going to take it to the test. I'm going for a ride with the same amount of watts and then see which bike is actually faster. Now let's move over to the test. Finally the actual test. In this test I used a fixed beginning and end point. Every time I started my timer I beam my car which was parked alongside of the road. That was the beginning of the headwind section. I used the same entry speed and I started pushing a set amount of power of 355 watts as steady as I could. The end point of the headwind section was a change in tarmac just in front of a small bridge 6.8 kilometers up the road. On the way back everything was reversed and faster because of the tailwind. Also I pushed 375 watts on the way back to have a slightly higher speed to compare. Okay let's jump into the test results. We have section A, B and C. A is a 6.8k headwind section that I aimed at 355 watts. B is the same section with a tailwind aiming at 370 watts and C is both sections combined. I added the values to have an average over the head and tailwind section to sort of even out uh, a difference in wind speed. The benchmark is the budget bike with no closed wheel, no disc wheel. So I pushed 354 watts on section A giving me a 36.2 kilometer an hour speed and it took me 11 minutes and 8 seconds. On the way back with the tailwind, 375 watts, 47.6 k an hour, so a lot faster obviously with the wind and this took me 8 minutes 32 seconds. Add these values, I'm 
uh, roughly 42 kilometers an hour, 19 minutes, 40 seconds. This average is just the addition of the A and B divided by two, which is not the exact average, but it will give us an estimate uh, for all three bikes. Now we're gonna compare the, the TT bike with the disc wheel, with the closed back wheel, and then compare it to the road bike. Second time ever I'm riding a disc wheel, so wish me luck. With the TT wheel, I did 354 watts, giving me a speed of 37.5K an hour. So that's faster, 1.3 kilometers an hour faster than without that special wheel. 10 minutes, 48 seconds, so that's 20 seconds less. On the road bike, pushing 355 watts, I was going 37.9 kilometers an hour. So that's 1.7K an hour faster than the budget bike and 0.4K an hour faster than the time trial bike with the closed back wheel. 10 minutes and 40 seconds. So that's still eight minutes shorter than the time trial bike with the closed back wheel. In this case, my road bike was faster but maybe the wind wasn't as strong as in the first two runs. There was a little bit of time in switching to the next bike. So we're gonna see that right now. Comparing the tailwind section on the, the bike, the TT bike with the disc wheel, I did 374 watts, giving me a speed of 49 kilometers an hour. So that's 1.4K an hour faster than without the closed wheel. Just like the section A, it was about the same uh, difference. This gives me a time of eight minutes and 18 seconds. So another 14 seconds faster. If we add this to each other uh, in section C, we have uh, a roughly a 43 kilometer an hour speed and uh, 19 minutes and six seconds. So on a 20 minute time trial, roughly 15 kilometers, you will gain about 30 seconds by just using a closed back wheel. Now let's go into the road bike on the tailwind section, I pushed 373 watts, giving me a speed of, here we go, 49.8 kilometers an hour. So that's 2.2K an hour faster than the, the budget bike and still 0.8 kilometers an hour faster than the TT bike with the closed back wheel. So it's both faster on the up and in the tailwind section, eight minutes and seven seconds. It saved me 11 seconds versus the closed back wheel and 25 seconds versus the budget bike with the normal back wheel. So that's a lot. Now looking at the average of the up and back section, I'm doing about 2K an hour faster than the budget bike and still 0.6 kilometers an hour faster than the TT bike with the closed back wheel, giving me a time of 18 minutes and 47 seconds. This saves me almost a minute versus the budget bike and still 19 seconds on the TT bike with a closed back wheel. So even though I did not have a fast time trial wheel, I was still faster than the time trial bike. Now this is interesting. What if we can extrapolate this data? Let's say I would have a closed disc wheel on my road bike. If we add the same change in speed, the same advantage that I gained from that closed back wheel, the data is actually very interesting. So let's go, 355 watts on the headwind section would give me 38.2 kilometers an hour. That is 1.7K an hour faster than the time trial bike with a closed back wheel. It saves me 28 seconds. On the tailwind section, it's roughly the same. The increase in speed is higher because the speed is higher. The higher the speed, the more advantage you'll get by increased aerodynamics. So 51.2 kilometers an hour and seven minutes, 53 seconds would be 25 seconds faster than the TT bike with the closed back wheel. Super interesting. If we look at the up and back section, it would take me 18 minutes and 13 seconds, saving almost a minute versus the time trial bike with a disc wheel. This is a very, very big result. Now, I'm not sure where this difference comes from. It can be uh, the efficiency of the bike itself. My road bike is a more advanced, more modern, more high-end bike than the time trial bike. So if the mechanical resistance in the bike is so much less, then that could explain the difference. When we look at the position 
on the bike it's almost the same the time trial bike and my road bike the position doesn't change a lot so maybe if i use a, a high uh, high-end modern time trial bike it would change and there would be a bigger difference who knows so to answer the question of this video is it worth to buy a budget time trial bike to replace your really fast road bike in a time trial in my case if you ask me i would say no because my road bike is way faster than the bike that i borrowed obviously there's a few ifs and buts and maybes and it's not super scientific but in my case the road bike wins guys let me know what you think of this test if you want to see a different test maybe i can set something up um, i had fun doing this it's interesting i now know that my road bike is pretty fast and maybe I want to test a real time trial bike. How fast is a current modern time trial bike against my road bike? That's interesting. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Gonna see you next time. See ya!